Eileen, it's been a fantastic uh, day here. We've had a lovely day of 70 attendees coming from uh, representatives from child protection throughout the Northwest, and we've had an excellent discussion over the day based around the Monroe Review and its strategies for trying to shift child protection forward into a new frame of reference. What do you think the main shifts are? And, you know, in addition to those shifts, what did you get out of today? What I got out of today was that most people agree with my analysis mm -hmm. of, of where we are and where we would like to get to. Mm -hmm. And what today helped to bring out was the number of obstacles to getting there uh, in terms of that the current system has evolved for good reason. Uh, and one of the big issues is how to help everybody handle the anxiety um, that you get if you really appreciate how complex the work is mm -hmm. and how to get people from uh, talking about ensuring this and ensuring that when mm -hmm. they're just like King Canute telling the tide to go back. Mm -hmm. uh, that you, you, you are dealing with um, risk assessments, uh, pr probabilities and the most unexpected things happen. Mm -hmm. and so we cannot make life safe. Mm -hmm. I mean, any parent, in fact, knows that with their own mm -hmm. child, that they mm -hmm. desperately want their child to be safe and well, but mm -hmm. they have to let them go and cross a road on their own at some point. I mean, very much your review is, is, a, is in many ways, I think, a courageous document. I mean, it's an innovative and, and fascinating document, but it's also a courageous one because you're trying to sort of really sh make a major shift in child protection. Mm -hmm. What do you think, if you were to identify two or three of the sort of key parts of it, what would they be? N not allowing people to get into the comfort zone of pretending they're dealing with certainty mm. uh, and not allowing them to create... Uh, a system where service outputs become the reality and we forget about the children. Mm. You also work um, this entire, you, what you rest this uh, you know, very substantial review on a framework of what you call systems theories. Mm. Um, what is systems theory? I know it's a big question. <laughs> and, and how did you sort of rest the review on it? What, it? what was it that's different, some sort of the typical public policy thinking? Well, I, I rested it on systems thinking because that's been in my research work for the last several years. Mm. And I came to that way of thinking because my earliest work uh, was around decision making and about the mistakes that people made. Mm -hmm. And my first rather naive solution was to tell people about the decisions, the mistakes they make and uh, to expect them then to get it right. And I, I did lots of lectures around the world on it, and everybody said, yes, this is very good, and we will try to do better. But the reality was that people didn't stop making those mistakes. So it, it pushed me into thinking, what is it in the wider organization that is discouraging people mm. from operating at that higher level? And, and, and then just moved on from there of realizing quite how complex the whole thing is and how many influences there are on what happens in the contact between a worker and a family that are completely outside their control. What's it, this also has a major impact on the social care workers themselves. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you think, mostly from your review, that you're trying to shift about what is it about the, the role of the care worker and how is that supposed to be different under what your review says as to what the previous system says? Well, in my picture of good practice, it's about being able to get through the front door and engage people in a conversation. Mm -hmm. It's about being able to form a relationship if, um, with them if possible and to show respect and compassion at the same time as having authority and saying this behavior is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, and so balancing that care and control, as we mm -hmm. used to talk about it, mm -hmm. is fundamental to the work. And if if the organization doesn't help people do that very complex job, then human nature tends to like to go towards one extreme or the other. Mm. And so you either get people doing what they call family support work, where they are completely blind to atrocious parenting, mm. or they become very authoritarian and bossy mm -hmm. uh, and end up in a very adversarial relationship mm -hmm. where there is no chink of cooperation to actually mm. bring things out better for the child. Mm. 
And how does this, this new way of, of trying to get social care workers to sort of uh, rethink the way they're doing their job, how does that relate to the targeting and sort of audit structure that surrounds current social care, uh, care work? Yeah. Well, that, that has to go because managers have to start putting value on whether you have a good understanding of the family. Uh, it isn't about whether you've completed a form, whether you've um, done it in a certain time scale. It's about, have you really been able to get to understand this family? Is there a man in the family that you have avoided meeting because you're scared of him? Mm -hmm. um, and being sure that people can say that, and, and you'll say, well, let's think about how to help you see him in a way that doesn't make you feel scared. Mm -hmm. um, but I, so management has to start to prioritise that work, and then it means that inspectors have to prioritise that. So that they have to move away from simple measures, which are measures of details that are quite remote from whether children are being helped or not. Now, all of this is happening when you're looking at the social care workers, you're looking at them very much at a local level. Mm -hmm. And you've come today and been speaking with 70 local, care, uh, local actors that are working on the system, mm -hmm. trying to go through it. How do you, uh, what, is, what do you see as the next steps for those actors to help this process? Mm -hmm. In essence, today we heard lots of actors who were very excited and very mm -hmm. keen and very interested. And many were sort of asking questions, what do we do next? What happens? Where do we go from here? I think the way the current system operates with a lot of top-down ordering is that it divides people uh, and that contributes to the way that people tend to blame each other when things go wrong. Uh, so one of the changes that I think could be beneficial is if people start to cooperate more and speak back up the line of communication to government, to Ofsted. Uh, of saying this is the way that we want to be inspected, this is the way that this regulation helps, but this is becoming dysfunctional. Um, so it's quite difficult for a maverick, a lone voice, to say it, whereas if several people are saying it, then the chances of it being listened to with some attention become greater. Is this how your review becomes sort of a courageous review in the sense of it, be, it would be so difficult for an individual to speak up, but if a lot of actors speak up, not only within their particular community or council area, but with multiple councils, you'd be able to do that. I believe you have a, a, a sort of interim review that's coming up eventually. How can this I have to um, in? write an interim progress report for the government next spring. And in it, I'm hoping to be able to give examples of how progress is being made, but also uh, to pick out where there are unexpected obstacles or where... Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the kind of shift in the dynamics where if you're just pushing on one or two variables but the others are still pushing in the other mm -hmm. direction, you may well not be able to change substantially at all. Right. Um, it, beyond the interim review, is there a further step or...? Not at the moment that I... well, okay. not that I'll be involved in as far as I know. Right. And then uh, it, also what's interesting is, particularly from today, because we had different uh, actors from different a aspects of the child uh, protection area, there were health actors, education, policing, how do you see your particular area, the, what covered in the Monroe Review of Child Protection, relating to the larger sort of UK public policy picture? Well, I think if the child protection system could become a learning system with more humility about what it can do, it would start to undermine people's confidence that they've got others tidy. Mm -hmm. So you'd view, you would, if I understand correctly, you would view that as a sense of, um, there, would you agree with the position that uh, uh, fundamentally what's happening in child protection is similar to what's happening in other areas of UK policy and that possibly um, moving beyond that child protection in a sense become even become a model for other policy areas. Yes, and I, I think the reason why child protection, why I was allowed to do this kind of review was that children's deaths at the hands of their parents is so horrific mm. it breaks through the kind of bureaucratic story that people have uh, built up and the idea that good practice is completing f paperwork on timescales, uh, you know, it, it just shatters that. Professor Eileen Monroth, thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for helping us not only with the day but with this project as well. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.